I am the Executive Vice President of International Society for Human Rights, the biggest human rights organization in Germany. Uh, I just want to say a few words about how we human rights defenders look at the whole story of persecution of Falun Gong. Ladies and gentlemen, we are standing just in front of the United Nations and People's Republic of China being a permanent member of the Security Council of United Nations. The Chinese government has also signed many inter international conventions run by United Nations. Among others, also signed the Convention for Human Rights, which says freedom of speech, freedom of belief, freedom of organization, etc., are all guaranteed for every citizen, including, of course, all citizens of China. But the problem is, like there is an old saying in China, which says, listen to his words, check his action. The same thing goes for the government and the Communist Party of China. Don't just listen to his words, but also check his action. So, they claim, they also agree to the universal human rights, but what about their action? Ladies and gentlemen, just three months before they started the brutal persecution against Falun Gong, Communist Party leader in China was still promising to the practitioners of Falun Gong that their freedom to practice Falun Gong is guaranteed. And three months later, they started a brutal and cruel persecution against all Falun Gong practitioners in China. People were illegally kidnapped, or they call it arrested, jailed, jailed in the prison, and also jailed in labor camp. According to the Chinese government's promise, things should go according to the law. But it is actually a well-known fact that the Chinese government, any police boss, has the right, without any legal process, to send any person to the labor camp, which they call re-educational center through labor. It is nothing else but like in the Soviet Union, the Gulag, and in Chinese they call it Lao Kai, reform, uh, uh, reform by labor. Now, as my previous speaker mentioned, they are so evil that they even try to make profit out of a persecution. Jailing people, sending people to labor camp costs money. Okay, people in labor camp, of course, produce a lot of product basically without any payment. But that is not worst of all. Worst of all is, again, in their propaganda, people of China may see on the TV how, how nice the government is. All the people sent to the labor camp, they got a medical checkup. But ladies and gentlemen, that is not a health checking. Because if you really are interested in checking the health of the prisoner in the labor camp, why the same prisoners in the labor camp are tortured, are beaten if they do not do everything exactly according to uh, the prisoner watchers. So again, they say one thing, they do another thing. Actually, this so-called health checkup are actually medical preparation for organ harvesting. And again, 
the Chinese government claimed that they never make any organ harvesting on Falun Gong practitioner or any other uh, unwanted of unwanted person. They claim that it is donated by the people, but when their light was disclosed by the fact that Chinese people are the last people who donate organs. This is the old belief that you don't die without part of your body. Then the Chinese government came up with a new lie, claiming that all these organs are donation from death penalty prisoners. But ladies and gentlemen, according to the statistics, roughly per year, about 1,700 people are sentenced to death in China, which is world champion anyway. But 1,700 people will not have, will not offer enough organs for more than 12,000 organ transplantation carried out in a different transplantation center. Ladies and gentlemen, the only explanation is these organs came from forced organ harvesting, in particular on Falun Gong practitioners.